Welcome back to a new video lecture and in this lecture we discuss an experiment from the material testing lab and that is spring test. So here we discuss about the aim or the objective of this experiment then some important terms is, then the procedure behind this experiment and also we discuss about the calculation part involved in this spring test. So here we discuss about the two types of springs that is open and closed helical spring that is in the first case it shows the closed coils helical spring and the second case it is showing the open coil helical spring from the diagram itself you can easily classify them this it means that the closed helical spring the coil distance or the pitch distance is very negligible and in the case of open coil the distance will be the adjacent coil distance it is going to be much high when compared with the closed coil spring okay so moving on to the aim you can clearly observe it you need to calculate the stiffness and also the modulus of rigidity so actually what do you mean by this stiffness or what do you mean by this modulus of rigidity the stiffness means it's the ability of the particular body or the object to resist the deformation when some forces are applied over that particular material and this modulus of rigidity means it's the property of that particular material itself okay so moving on to the classification so in this experiment we will work out on two cases that is the open and also closed helical spring to find out this stiffness and the modulus of rigidity for each cases so you can classify them into two categories that is open and closed helical spring so you know that the pitch is very small and the angle of helix is also very small in the case of closed helical spring and whereas in the case of open coiled helical spring the pitches also will be there and also helical angle also will be there so both the values are needed for the calculation part also then moving on to some of the important terms is that is the proof load proof stress proof resilience then stiffness axis of helix when you take the definition of this proof load it is the greatest load which the spring can carry without getting permanently distorted means the maximum load which the spring can hold down without any permanent dam deformation happens and coming to the next term that is the proof stress it's the maximum stress when spring is subject to proof load when you are applying this proof load at that point if you take the stress value or that condition is called the proof stress value and the proof resilience is the strain energy stored when subject to proof load when you are applying this proof load or the maximum load the energy stored over that particular object or the material in this case it is spring that is called the proof resilience then moving on to the stiffness it is a load per unit deflection as per the mathematical calculation you can calculate the stiffness using this load per unit deflection then the next one is axis of helix the angle between the plane of coil and also the plane perpendicular to the axis of helix so that is called the axis of helix so moving on to the next one that is the first two category that is the closed coil spring you can clearly observe that there is a deflection value that is the delta using an equation you have find out that is 64 w r cube n divided by n d raised to 4 so actually this w is the load which you are going to apply to the spring and this capital r radius of the coil then small n number of tenses of that particular coil then capital N, capital N means it is the modulus of rigidity value actually. Then this uh, small d means the diameter of the spring wire. So during calculations you will get more clarity regarding each terms. Okay, so the, this equation is very important. Okay, this delta equation is or this deflection equation is very important. Then moving on to the next one that is the open coil spring also in that case also there is an equation for deflection so the, this equation is going to be some more big when compared to the closed coil spring so there are another an important term that is called the alpha that is the angle so helix angle actually so some values will be there you have to note down that values also for the calculation part then if you observe this tension actually in this case in the case of closed helical spring here we are using 
tension test actually we are giving some tensile forces over the heli closed case but in the case of this open coil helical spring we are applying compressive forces okay so that's a difference which uh, we are doing uh, we, that's a difference actually in the, in the experimental purpose or experimental point of view you are applying tensile forces in the closed coil and uh, compressive force in the open coil okay so then, then with the help of a video we will see how it uh, defines us so here you can observe the diagram for or uh, or the experiment or the instrument which you are using for the spring test that is the uh, spring test mission and here you can observe the three legged loading head okay so this handle which we are using to the loading actually loading purpose we are using this one then actually we are placing the spring over this position then here we are uh, here we the load measuring unit actually here how much load it is going to happen over this particular particular load and how much deflection you can observe that also you can observe from this load measuring attachment then the vernier caliper then so so actually we have to take down this load in the observation column actually if you observe this load and deflection uh, you have to mark down then you have to apply this loads in this way that is 5 10 15 20 25 likewise you have to apply the loads then you have to call uh, when you are applying this 5 5 newton actually how much deflection it is happened that you have to note down that is the first case that is loading cases okay so when you are applying some values you will obtain and similarly you have to also note down the uh, deflection when unloading also okay so randi cases are not parnya the number one five newton five newton ten newton and i'm loading up play you know at the deflection are the first case and down other than number withdraw you know unloading in the some way in a third one and deflection other than a calculator another okay. so actually first of all we will work out on a closed coil spring so first of all the diameter of the spring wire you have to calculate okay the diameter of the spring wire Then also note down the number of tenses or number of coils is involved in this by counting actually. So while counting you will get a clarity regarding this number of coils is, that is a small n. So likewise you have to count it. Then you will get some values. Is. Then you have to take the diameter of the spring coil. In the initial case you have to take the diameter of the spring wire and here you are going to take the diameter total diameter of that particular spring coil so that this one is actually capital D and the first one you have taken is small d then you have to place the this uh, closed coil spring over this instrument and adjust the instrument by rotating actually this then if you switch on sometimes there will be some loads as well will be there then you have to adjust into okay then you have to press on that set button then you can observe the in the first box the newton and the second actually the load value and the deflection values you can clearly observe here okay so actually now it is zero So loading so close to coil actually we are doing so some values is so actually we started rotating anti-clockwise if you started rotating anti-clockwise the values is also you can observe in this case i'm go first to five newton on the end of the 4.3 i total deflection one in the code on answer again rotate you do 
ഓക്കെ സോ റൊട്ടേറ്റ് ചെയ്തത് ആ എത്രത്തോളമാണ് വാല്യൂ വന്നത് അത് മാർക്ക് ചെയ്യുക നമ്മുടെ ഒബ്സർവേഷൻ കോളത്തിനകത്തേക്ക് നമുക്ക് മാർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ സാധിക്കും സോ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് റെപ്രസെൻറ്റ് ന്യൂട്ടൺ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എം എം ആൻഡ് യു ക്യാൻ കണ്ടിന്യൂ അപ് ടു ട്വൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ന്യൂട്ടൺ ആൻഡ് നോ ഡൗൺ ദ ഡിഫ്ലക്ഷൻ അറ്റ് എവറി ഫൈവ് ന്യൂട്ടൺ ഇൻറ്റർവെൽസ് സോ ടെൻ ഫൈവ് ടെൻ ദെൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ട്വൻറ്റി ട്വൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ലൈക്ക് വൈസ് യു ഹാവ് ടു നോ ഡൗൺ ദ വാല്യൂസ് ഓൾസോ so you have to rotate in the anti clockwise direction in the case of loading and also note down those values then moving on to the unloading cases you have to release those nammal ipo etrathola aanu load cheyidu vechirikkunnathu adu release cheyanu 25 20 50 then 10 5 likewise then some വേരിയേഷൻ ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ഡിഫ്ലക്ഷൻ ചിലപ്പോൾ ഒരു പക്ഷേ വേരിയേഷൻ വന്നിരിക്കാം അത് മാർക്ക് ചെയ്യുക എത്രയാണോ വാല്യൂ കിട്ടുന്നത് അത് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള വാല്യൂസ് മാർക്ക് ചെയ്യുക സോ അൺലോഡിങ് റൊട്ടേറ്റ് ക്ലോക്ക്വൈസ് ഡയറക്ഷൻ റിവേഴ്സ് ഡയറക്ഷൻ ആക്ച്വലി ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ലോഡിങ് യു ഹാവ് അപ്ലൈഡ് ഇൻ ദ ആൻഡ് ക്ലോക്ക്വൈസ് ഡയറക്ഷൻ ബട്ട് ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് അൺലോഡിങ് യു ഹാവ് ടു അപ്ലൈ ഇൻ ദ ക്ലോക്ക്വൈസ് ഡയറക്ഷൻ സോ ഫൈവ് അപ് ടു ഫൈവ് യു ഹാവ് ടു മാർക്ക് ഡൗൺ so this is the case of open coil spring open coil here also you have to perform all those uh, test means this number of coils is to be calculated then diameter of the spring then diameter of the spring wire itself you have to calculate then number of coils is that also here also you have to count down actually by using this vernier caliper you have to cal calculate those values this is actually the length of the spring using this way we will calculate the length of the spring all those terms are very important to find out those final results so the number of spring number of coils is actually here also you have to place this adjustments the same position actually but you are using for this open coil spring in this way okay it is tightened and then you have to place those open coil spring over here here actually you are going to compress in the case of open coil spring so it is also adjusted then check out and uh, press on the set button then you can observe the newton and uh, unit also mm newton and mm units then if some values are here then press the trial button means to set into zero actually trial button actually then you have to apply the loading using this handle itself rotate clockwise actually so for compression actually happens here so for each loads so you have to do this work this experiment means this loading that is 5 10 15 20 25 the same way which you have applied in the close to boy 5 10 likewise and then note down those values to your observation table for each values that is 5 10 15 20 25 that is loading applied in the case in the clockwise direction and that is compressive forces you are applying actually so this uh, here also repeat this process up to this 25 newton then you have to unload in the same way anti clockwise direction and also note down those values for each case that is 25 20 15 then 10 and 5 how the values is varies 
okay so that's a case so that's a case of procedure behind this experiment then you have to note down the observation table from this observation table you have to fill up those values that is diameter of the spring you will get some values and the radius of the spring then number of coils then diameter of the spring wire these all times you have to calculate from this experiment okay now the initial stage then vernier caliper which we calculate the values on the diameter of the spring capital D then diameter of spring where don't get confused with this capital D and small d then you have to fill up this tabular column the values is you can observe that is 5 then 10 15 20 25 likewise the values varies then loading values will be there then unloading values is then you have to take the uh, average then using this equation you already know this delta value for each cases that is the average deflection then using these values you can calculate this n value that is the modulus of rigidity value or the shear modulus value directly for each cases you can calculate okay so then you have to draw the graph between this uh, load and also for deflection the load in the y axis and deflection in the x axis and you will get a graph in the straight line and from this graph you have to note down this delta value and also the load value and with the help of these values this stiffness and also this shear modulus you have to find, calculate once again repeat after drawing this load versus deflection graph from this graph you have to note down this delta value and also this w value and with the help of that values is this w and delta you have to calculate the shear modulus value and also you can find out this stiffness that is the load value you know and the corresponding deformation value also you know so you will get this two values and the same case you can repeat over this open coil spring also here also you'll you you'll get some values for this diameter of the spring then it is going to be radius it is going to be d by 2 actually the number of coils also you can obtain then diam in this case also diameter of the spring will be there length of the spring also calculated then the additional component that is the pitch that is l by n the total length length by number of coils is then here also these loads is you can mark down and the corresponding loading also you note down and here additional component that is the angle of helix that is alpha that you can obtain by tan inverse of pitch divided by 2 pi r and using these equations you can find out these n values directly calculate these n values and from in this case also you can you can calculate this uh, this stiffness value by using this graph that is deflection uh, load versus deflection graph load over the y axis and deflection the x axis and you can easily calculate those values also so from this graph you can obtain this both the values modulus of rigidity and the stiffness of the spring and for each cases you can calculate this n values actually this modulus of rigidity values and finally you can find out this final result that is for the closed spring and also for the stiffness modulus of rigidity for the closed and for the open and also to find the stiffness for the closed and open cases so here we discussed about the spring test experiment for open and closed helical spring and here we discuss also about the difference and also the experimental how to calculate or how to find out this modulus of rigidity and also the stiffness so I hope the section clear and with this we wind up today's section and we will see in the next section. Thank you.